Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Lagops and this is some in-game footage from Battleforge. Now you may be wondering what's going on here because alpha testers obviously can't play the game yet. This is a two-year-old replay, actually two years and a month old, between me and Matt McBack. And yeah, it's a uh, it's one of those replays I still had in my Battleforge folder after two years and has never been uh, cast before and it's a quite interesting match because um, because yeah some interesting things happen I'm not gonna spoil this yet so let's just go ahead and start the replay I'm gonna speed this up a bit because in the beginning not a lot happens Let me back is starting nature tier 1 while I'm playing fire and I want to go aggressive very early on because pure nature uh, or nature tier 1 in general gets very strong with a high power level but right now I'm not going to attack him right away because I see that he if I want to do something up here it's, this is very strange because Usually if you if you move like this you want to launch an attack on the enemy base while being attacked as possible on this map because of this cliff right here or he wants to go tier 2 very very early on but this is very telegraphed because nature tier 1 gets strong at a high power level and if he's moving like this then I know that he is going to try to go tier 2 very early on and avoid a risky tier 1 fight against me because he's at a pretty low power level and um, but but this is very telecraft I'm already here I'm already halfway to his base so let's see how this plays out he's standing still doing nothing I'm a bit confused what's going on I don't want to co commit to an attack right away because uh, nature tier 1 is very snowbally if you if you screw up in your nature player gets a lot of units and now that I, I see that he's moving and he grabs a tier 2 orb pretty much what I expected and I'm immediately going into rush I know that I will get rooted at least once but this is fine because he does not want to spend more power on other units because he's going tier 2 playing tier 1 units right now would be a mistake so I try to rush down his power well let's keep the uh, monument here so it's almost complete so I choose to erupt just to be sure to take down his power well. And right now I've, I've, I'm in a pretty good situation because he basically only got 30 power off this power well. So he's really far behind and he went tier 2. Very early on this means that he's not having a whole lot of power to attack me with. So what I'm gonna do is instead I want to intercept his units very early on because I do not want to get them directly to my power and I want to make him spend power on storm singers to counter my units. I don't want him to, to run around with two or three bowers and attack me. So I was uh, pretty successful with getting some spawns out of him. Uh, additionally, well, let me stop this. It's, it's a bit fast. I am moving my Sandra down here to, just to force him to spawn a unit. Now I will proceed to run around the map with the uh, Sandra it's 110 power and his unit only holds 60 power now you this this is uh this doesn't seem like any good idea because uh, obviously i'm binding a lot more power than he does but what i want to prevent is that he is getting enough energy to spawn siege units and combine them with crowd control at this point in the game where you just can't defend with tier 1 against uh, Stonekin or pretty much any faction if they have enough power they will just crowd control you and while be having better units they can easily take down your well so all I want to do is to keep the energy very low in this game to prevent him from uh, from having a, a good use out of his crowd control spells and just defend because that's all I have to do I already destroy the power well and uh, the longer this power well right here stays up the more I will be in advantage so my plan right now is just defending. Even if I'm a bandits player, defending right here is the best choice because I am 
not having a good target to attack, like, there, there are no power wells here, I could only attack his orb, or maybe his base directly, but this is very hard against Stonekin. Even if I was to go tier 2 right now, it's it's very hard to make an actual attack, so I just try to delay him, try to defend and get in power advantage this way, and basically try to win the game by defending after making a very good move and at the start of the game. Like this was very very good at the beginning. I'm, I'm getting a huge advantage out of destroying this one well very early on. And right now he can't continue his offense. Like He's stuck with units which are basically just counters. Like They're not gonna take down a well with this. So I'm, I'm pretty safe. And uh, right here I'm doing a, a horrible micromanage mistake. I'm, I must have been sleeping there. Basically my unit dies with just making one attack. It's not very good. This was risky. How much power does he have? 59. So I, I'm, I'm, I was guessing correct because right here a heal would have been devastating but he needs 80 power for this. And he is not getting it at all. Like his, his void power flow is very low. He's getting 8 energy right now. And I'm getting 12? Yeah, this, this is brutal. 11 or 12 energy. So even if I only have tier 1 units, it's fine if I use more power than him because I have a lot more void energy. It's okay to defend even if I use more power because in the long run I will win because I'm a power well up and I already have a, a lot better void flow because 150 power is bound in this monument. This is also gone from his void pool. So he is not having an extra well. So that usually helps if you do have more wells, then one well difference is, is not so much of an issue, but if you do not have any extra wells and the enemy constantly has one well more than you do, and that is devastating. So just from his one mistake in tier 1 by telegraphing that he wants to take this orb and getting rushed, he basically got put very very far behind. And this is hard to come back from him. But uh, this is still tricky for me because I have to find a a good point to take another uh, a, uh, another orb. If I take the orb too soon, then I will get rushed. If I take it too late, then I will lose a power well in tier one before I even get tier two because I cannot defend against his stonekin. The more energy is in the game, the, the harder it will get because all the crowd control gets super effective, especially combined with the poison from Spirit Hunters, that is devastating. And right here I erupted too soon, and basically got countered by a heal that was very good of him, but still I, 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 I used the uh, scavenger for it, but, uh, but still he, he's, he's not going to touch my well, because everything he's forced to play is just counters. He would need Barrows, but he does not have the power for, for Barrows plus cross control plus some other units. He's, he's not having enough power to, to do anything. Like, he is really having power issues right now. But I still get a whole lot of power. It makes it very easy to defend for me. Because uh, I'm allowed to, to use more power to, to defend. It's, it's, it's fine because I'm getting more. So there's there's no issue in, in just spawning four tier one units to deal with two tier two units. And right over here starts a bower attack. Now this is something I'm not a fan of if you're on low power, because bowers only get effective if you do have the crowd control to support them. So he's basically running an attack at two fronts, but he does not have the power to support any of those attacks. Right? He cr crowd controls right here, but that means he can't do anything over here. So this, this is not good. I, I do not approve of this, but uh, I guess it was desperation. Uh, meanwhile, I also want to go T2, because this attack just gave me the opening to do this, because he's spending a whole lot of power on attacking on two fronts. Just not something Stonekin are very good at. And he only has counters here, like... My power well just does not even care. Now I'm tier 2. Now he is in real trouble because he was unable to rush me. And I do have a very large power advantage. And what what is he doing with this power? This, this, this is again pretty bad of him because he should be at doing something with this. At least pressure... Pressure the, the maybe the monument right here. Like after these spawns, he should run down there and do this. But but 
he's not paying attention to this, so he will basically lose this unit without having anything done besides just, uh, yeah, spending power on it and, and binding power in the unit. At this point, the match is pretty much over, but he uh, nevertheless is trying to win this. He does not leave the game. Because maybe he thinks that he can come back from this. Uh, or just take it to the late game, because I can't take anything down of of, uh, of his base. Because um, Stunkin in general is very strong against bandits, and I am really having a hard time getting through the defense. Now you might be wondering why I'm using flying units, it's because other units are easily knocked back by uh, the Stone Tempests. Like, they are very dangerous and my options to play are really, really limited against uh, against Stonekin. So right here comes the Stone Tempest. I uh, did a pretty good lava field there. But Stone Tempest is trouble because I need to use Frenzy and and stuns on the Assassins to do any damage, but then if they get knocked back, they basically die for free. He doesn't even have to kill them right here, I should really have... That, that was bad, I, I should have uh, pulled back my unit to heal it up. Oh, oh, this is interesting, let me pause here. I did not realize, he is attacking my power well with a bubble again. Um, but uh, what I really want to talk about is uh, something I I often do against such combos is that I use the ability of Winter Hunter to disenchant myself. Now I have 10 seconds where I... no, even longer. 15 seconds, so this is brutal. I didn't remember it being this long. 15 seconds is, is huge. 15 seconds where the Storm Sing ability doesn't work, the poison doesn't work, and he can't crowd control me. And uh, also, the Ravage is very effective against uh, this combination because those units, they don't deal a whole lot of damage and they're not air counters either. So I'm able to get some really nice advantages of this just by using one Ravage and self disenchant. And right here over the base, he does not have the power to do anything serious. I spawned a Nightcrawler, frenzied it to force the root, and in the root I can play Dark of Assassins. He can't crowd control them anymore easily, so... Uh, so his attack is not going to work out. And now again, I'm using the self disenchant to be not effective by the spirit hunters. Like spirit hunters don't work at all against a, a single buffed up wind hunter. It's it's not going to kill it because the poison does not even apply. So right now I'm having a sizable lead. This power well already gave me a lot of power, like almost 300 power. This is very hard to come back, especially if you didn't take any wells at all, which is not particularly something you would want to do with, uh, with Stonekin, because Stonekin excels at playing at high power levels. The more power you have, the better all the crowd control, the heals. Like, you have an army which is just not going to die, and the enemy has to throw units at it all the time, and they, 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 they still don't live. Again, a very bad lava field. The units survived. But, uh... It kind of works out for me, I guess. Because right now all you can do is really heal. My units are split up, you can't control both. And I could use the Zenshan, so... This is very good positioning from my side. And I used this enchant on this because I thought he was going to use Spirit Hunters against it. There was no need to do this, so I basically had to use a Ravage for nothing. This was not good. I, uh, I should only have done this as a reaction, and, and not to prevent it. But right now he's running out of ideas. He does not have the power needed to to have the, the huge Stonekin snowball rolling. And all I have to do is, is defend and defend, because I'm just gaining a huge advantage, and he's not going to get at any point where he's really dangerous, because he's not getting enough power to do this. So I'm, I'm basically, so it's like 6 or 7 minutes, I'm only defending, I'm gaining an advantage just by being up a power well and defending. If he wants to take a power well, I could simply take a power well on my own, so this is not going to work. So uh, I guess he's kind of doing the right thing by at least trying to attack me, but right now I'm having 300 power and I'm 
Matt McBag is stuck at 100 and something. I moved my unit right here to take another monument because now I really want to finish this game. But this is not going to happen. He sends two borrowers, so I don't want to risk it. But I take this well instead, and I guess. I really have to guess why I did that. Because usually you don't want to take a well when you're getting attacked by borrowers, especially if you're bandits. But I guess I wanted to give him a target instead of my base, because the only way he is uh, going to get back into this game is if he destroys my tier 1 orb, which is my fire orb right there, and then I can't spawn any units and then he can win the game still. So this is probably the only way why I do risk instantly losing a power well. Just because I'm already so far ahead and I don't want to lose my orb. And he's again making multi-base attacks at a very low power level, which means that he only has crowd control in one spot. This was again very good. I used my ability to prevent the uh, oink on at least one of the wind hunters. And he does not have power for heals or anything. And right here he also got countered because he could not support this attack. You really needed energy for this. And I really don't agree on, on splitting up attacks when you're this far behind it. That's where the replay ends. I hope it was fun to watch this and I I do have some more replays, but it was really hard to find good replays against high level players at the end of Battleforge. Like, so many good players just were inactive and nobody even cared about PvP anymore. It was kind of sad. So, I do have some replays, but they are maybe not as interesting as this one because this one really shows that even with bandits, even with bandits against Stonekin, it is effective to defend if you already gained an advantage. Usually you read in guides that you should never ever be in a situation with bandits where you only defend. Because that generally makes you lose the game. But at this point I was having such a power advantage that defending was the only good choice I had. Because I was not taking down his base. It is too hard to get through all the CC and protects. And I w would really risk throwing my advantage away. So... I just defended and I won a match, a high elo match by defending with bandits. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, maybe I will cast some other replays, maybe I will take some from uh, replay sites. I think it was bfcards.info. I should still have a count there, if it still exists. So then you might see some replays of other players playing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have fun, goodbye.